Ladies and gentlemen, this is your reaction. This is what happens if a super volcano blows up by channel Kazakhstan in a nutshell. Yes, <laughs> uh, this is a, a little blows up type of uh, category that they do. I guess uh, this type of videos gets more view than any other. I guess from them, <laughs> which is yeah. I don't know. Didn't they do this already? Super volcano thing. I don't know. There's been so many cases of video. I don't know. But yeah, super volcanoes. Basically, this is one of the top tier. Uh, you know. Extinction event type of things, right? Uh, if super volcano blows up, right? I mean, there's a potential. There's a high chance that you know enough, uh, you know enough dust and enough things will encompasses the earth that no sunlight comes in for a long time. That would uh, pose dangers uh, to you know, I guess, uh, ecosystem basically. I don't know. Humans can survive, I think, depending on how bad the explosion was. Right, if it's too bad, I guess if uh, the if it's, it stays there for long enough time, I guess even the humans are in danger. But yeah, basically, lots of people would die. Lots of uh, animals definitely would go extinct. Yeah, it's fucked up. Especially if uh, you know you're living close to the super volcano, right? Then you're just done. Right, Yellowstone is one of the most famous super volcano there is. Right, uh, even though there is no chance of going off anytime soon, especially for hundreds of thousands of years. You can never know. That's the assumption, apparently. All right, let's do this one. Remember, people, like my reaction. Don't forget to subscribe so I'm not wasting my videos throughout tomorrow. Check out the reaction. There's a link in the description. And yeah. The Earth is a gigantic ball of semi-molten rock with a heart of iron as hot as the surface of the sun. Titanic amounts of heat left over from its birth and the radioactive decay of trillions of tons of radioactive elements find no escape but up. Currents of rock spanning thousands of kilometers carry this energy to the surface. Earth's crust is the only thing in their way. It feels solid to us, but it's only a fragile barrier, an apple skin around a flaming behemoth. True apocalypses can break through and unleash eruptions tens of times more powerful than all of our nuclear weapons combined, subjecting the climate to centuries worth of change in a single year while drowning continents in toxic ash and gases. Supervolcanoes. How big can they get? And will they put an end to humanity? I think humans can survive, but I don't know. Lots of people will die. Yeah. Volcanoes. There are many types of volcanoes, from towering mountains to lava domes, but they have two main sources. The first is at the boundaries between tectonic plates, the pieces of the crust that cover the Earth like a giant jigsaw puzzle. There are seven major tectonic plates and dozens of smaller ones, drifting against each other at up to 15 centimeters per year. This sounds slow, but on geological timescales, it is a titanic struggle over who gets to stay on the surface. The winning plate crumples into a new mountain range, while the loser is shoved underneath into an ocean of hot rock at 1,300 degrees Celsius, the asthenosphere. The temperature here is enough to melt rock into a liquid, but the insane pressures of all that mass keep it a superheated solid. Tectonic plates are usually in contact with water for thousands of years and absorb some of it. When they're submerged into the hot underworld, this water triggers chemical transformations that allow tiny portions to melt into magma. Liquid magma is less dense than solid rock, so it rises to the surface in furious bubbles that accumulate in sponge-like reservoirs right under the crust. If enough magma accumulates, it becomes powerful enough to pierce through the crust, which we experience as volcanoes. This happens under the winning plate like a revenge attack by the loser before it's erased forever. <laughs> That's interesting. Okay. Okay, first of all, I don't know if uh, I'm not hundred percent sure about this, but magma is just word for lava, right? But if a uh, lava is inside and not outside, right, it's considered magma. But as soon as it you know erupts and comes outside, now it's lava. I guess there's no difference. If I remember correctly, I don't know. But yeah. The second main source of volcanoes are thought to be mantle plumes. These are columns of abnormally hot rock that rise all the way from the planet's core mantle boundary to the surface. Much less is known about them, but in a way, it's as if the Earth's mantle has weather patterns and mantle plumes are a little like hot air rising to form storm clouds. Storms hundreds of millions of years old, made of rock circulating at a rate of a few millimeters per month. 
they don't care about the motion of tectonic plates, so they can break the crust to create volcanoes in the middle of nowhere that stubbornly stay active as the crust shifts around them. The volcanic boom meter. Scientists love to put big booms on a scale and came up with a logarithmic scale that measures the volume ejected during an eruption. The Volcanic Explosivity Index, or VEI. Simply put, it starts really small and gets very big very quickly. A VEI-2 eruption would fill 400 full Olympic swimming pools with lava. We have around 10 of these per year. At VEI-3, we already see devastating effects like the eruption of the Semeru volcano in 2021 that destroyed thousands of homes in Indonesia. At VEI-5, we see catastrophic amounts of materials, cubic kilometers of debris, equivalent to an entire lake of molten rock blasted into the air. Like the 2022 Honga Tonga Honga Hapai eruption that sent a shockwave around the globe many times and created ocean-wide tsunamis. At a VEI of 6, an eruption can change the world. In 1883, the Indonesian island volcano Krakatoa erupted nearly continuously over the course of five months. One of those eruptions blew it apart, producing the loudest sound recorded in history. Ten trillion times louder than a rocket taking off, heard halfway around the world. 30-meter-high tsunamis swept away nearby populations, and so much gas and ash were released that global temperatures cooled by nearly 0.5 degrees Celsius. Red, dusty sunsets followed for many years. Damn! At VEI-7... I mean, we Krakatoa, we know about that, right? Uh, so the closest village was instantly wiped out or something like that. That's just holy shit. And the sound must have been deafening. Deafening at a level it would actually blow up your eardrums. <sighs> we, we say these words, but we can't really try trying to process that. Like, holy shit, volcano goes off, how it feels, how it looks. Uh, how loud would it be that it would actually blow up your eardrums, right? Yeah, damn, that's just terrifying. Na nature can be really scary. This is one of the big examples of it. So, damn, but I remember a clip uh, I saw about a boat literally running away uh, because volcano was just going off and then you can see the explosions. I'm like, god damn. People who live around, I mean, it makes sense, right? Uh, people living around the volcanoes, it kind of makes sense because volcano are the best thing to, I guess, you know, make the ground fertile, right? I mean, that is one of the reasons why, you know, places around Indonesia and shit has lots of, you know, farming capabilities because of this. So, if, you know, if volcano constantly feeds the ground its nutrients so you can farm better and better, kind of makes sense. But still, people living around the volcanoes, I, I could never do that, right? I mean, I understand that nowadays it's really hard for a volcano to, ju to just go off and kill everybody without we knowing it. I guess we would have warnings in advance, like a few days advance at least. But still, man, I would be afraid constantly. Living around volcano is fucked up. It's like living around, it's like, you know, that Fallout 3 thing in Megaton. People living around an atomic bomb. <laughs> to me, it's similar to that. This is fucked up. We get super colossal eruptions, millennium defining events that human civilization has only encountered a handful of times. Mount Tambora was a 4,300 meter high mountain until it exploded in 1815 and released 400 times more energy than the Tsar bomber. 140 billion tons of ash and dust were shot halfway to space before smothering the world's skies, turning them a sickly yellow. There was no summer the following year, crops died, and over a hundred thousand people perished. I'm not gonna lie, the yellow thing, right? Everything is just yellow because there's this dust cloud over it. That is the closest thing to fallout you can get. Obviously, apart from actual nuclear apocalypse. This is the dreadful potential of volcanic eruptions, with famines across the other side of the world and even centuries-long cold periods being attributed to them. Okay, but what's a supervolcano? The term supervolcano is a media invention and not a scientific term. The main oh, issue shit. with them is that not every <laughs> eruption from a supervolcano is a super eruption. What makes supervolcanoes special is that they've been waiting to erupt for hundreds of thousands of years. Pressure builds up in colossal magma reservoirs several kilometers deep until it becomes strong enough to lift the rock above it by several meters. Rocks crack under the pressure until they finally give way and billions of tons of gas and ash blast out at supersonic speed. An insane explosion of at least a thousand cubic kilometers that impacts every corner of the globe. And yet, 
that is only a small portion of the magma reservoir. Super eruptions are... I know it's unlikely, but newer <laughs> volcanoes like that could appear literally any place around the world. There's a, there's a possibility, even though it's very slim. Right? So imagine shit like that happens in New York. You know New York is done at that point, right? Everybody from the New York has to move now. But this is fucking New York. Manhattan and everything. Took years to create all this building and God knows how much money. So, there are many things that could make us move, let's just say, right? I mean, asteroid used to be a threat, but I don't know. We can see a... I mean, we can see a gigantic asteroid. I don't know. We can't see the city-killing asteroid coming. That just happens. But most of the uh, ground is not cities, so there is a high chance it would, you know, hit some land or a Pacific Ocean or something. But still, there are many things that would that would make us move, right? Like uh, the, the asteroid coming in 2036, if it hits, right? I think it's going to affect uh, New York and, the, you know, that kind of coast. But we can see that coming and we can deflect it. But something like super volcano, just nature, let's just say, geological activities... That would fuck things up really badly, especially with cities like New York. Like, what do you do at that point? Unlike a boiling pot of water, popping its lid off and spilling a bit off the top. Afterwards, the ground collapses into the void left behind, forming a hole called a caldera. Under this caldera, pressure starts building again until the volcano gathers enough energy for another super eruption. But this could take hundreds of thousands of years. It's estimated that one of the few volcanoes capable of super eruptions on Earth could cause a catastrophic eruption every 17,000 years on average. Mm. That would make them far more frequent than comparable asteroid impacts. The most recent super eruption is the Oranui eruption 26,500 years ago in New Zealand. With the force of dozens of billions of tons of TNT, a Mount Everest-sized pile of explosives, a huge portion of the landscape was scooped out and thrown into the atmosphere. It left behind a caldera spanning 20 kilometers and it caused the entire southern hemisphere to undergo a period of abrupt cooling. Though among super eruptions, it's a mere firework. The Lake Toba eruption of 74,000 years ago was a much more significant turning point in history. It released a gargantuan 5,300 cubic kilometers of material, enough to blanket parts of South Asia in 15 centimeters of ash and trigger a rapid four degrees Celsius drop in global temperatures. Now that, that shit right there, this is what people think of super volcano, right? This one, right? So this level of shit, that's it. Most of the, it's like a literal turning point, right? Everything would change at that point. It's possible that the volcanic winter lasted 10 years, followed yeah. by worldwide droughts for centuries. That's Earth's just, yeah. climate might have not recovered for a thousand years. The largest volcanic events we know of were not really huge explosions, but floods of millions of cubic kilometers of lava. The grand finale were the Siberian traps around 250 million years ago, a continuous release of lava for 2 million years. They raised the ocean million. temperatures to over 40 degrees Celsius, which caused the Permian-Triassic extinction, killing over 90% of all species. Earth's surface needed 9 million years to recover. These sorts of eruptions don't change the climate, they are the climate. Seriously, this is like, a, you know, we think of our Earth as a stable system in a way, right? This would make it unstable if it happens. So if shit like this happens, two million years, it, got, it went on for two million years. Can you even process that, what is a two million years, right? Even if that happens, the scientists say, okay, holy shit, this has happened. We didn't see that coming, but it's going to stay for a million years. And everybody's just like, okay, you know what? Mars seems just about right. Let's just, let's just go to Mars. Hopefully, <laughs> we haven't seen anything even remotely close to that scale in many millions of years. So, should you be scared of supervolcanoes? Yeah. Definitely not. They've been used to frighten many people and are overhyped they as an know. unavoidable apocalypse. The most famous one, Yellowstone, will erupt again, but they will be relatively small eruptions. Natural disasters for sure, but not enough to devastate the US or come close to ending humanity. The chance of a VEI-8 eruption in the next few hundred years is less than 2%, and more importantly, it wouldn't come as a sudden surprise. Yeah. However, less powerful but more frequent eruptions can also do serious damage to our civilizations and are in many ways a much greater concern. So we must watch for slow changes in magma reservoirs like ground swelling and temperature increases to get an early warning that can save the lives of people living the closest to a volcano.
And there's time to develop solutions that can remove sulfur and ash from the stratosphere to eliminate the root cause of the climate disruption we've seen from previous eruptions. I, come on, we're not doing that. Come maybe on. we'll even be able to turn this force of destruction... I don't know, I'll just become like this. And every time somebody shows a you know, system like this where some people can literally filter out the air and smoke and shit, I'm like, yeah, we could definitely do that, but we are not going to do that, let's be honest. right? Because a system like that exists right now to counter uh, global warming, right? We can counter global warming, but nobody's going to invest in shit like that, right? into an agent for good by exploiting the geothermal energy held in their giant magma reservoirs. We've done this work for so many other disasters, and we are already doing things we could only have dreamed about decades ago, like sending a probe to perform our first asteroid redirection yes. test. Finally. With determination, humanity really can solve anything. So while deep below us an angry hell is churning and waiting for its moment, you can sleep well tonight. Learning how we can get ahead of catastrophes like climate change. Oh, there you go. Yeah, well, go to brilliant.org for us nutshell and support this. Channel. Seriously, support this channel. This is the best science channel there is. But yeah, we finally uh, tried to deflect asteroid. Fine, what is the 90s? But yeah, finally we did that. So obviously, I feel like that things are not gonna stop eventually. Whatever we think of will take an effect, right? So all the technology we think of, like. Okay, solar panels in desert would solve all our power problems. Nobody's going to do that. Of course, not. But one day slowly it would accumulate and somebody would do it. It would be slow. That's, that's what, I, what I, my view is about the technology and things like that. Like he showed like how we can filter out the, all the smoke and gas. Nobody's going to do that, right? It's not going to happen when you need it. But eventually someone will create some kind of system which, yeah, nothing just halts, right? That's a, that's a constant in this world. Nothing halts. Eventually, it pops up, right? So at least there's hope there. Right, people? That was what if what happens if a super volcano blows up? I just that in a nutshell. We would know. We would know for way, if if a Titanic volcano blows up, that would actually kill most life on the planet. We would know that about that thousands of years before, right? Uh, at least hundreds. I don't know, but yeah. All right. If you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.